Hello, Steve. Hello, Jill. It's time to game classy. You know, what I what I say early Sunday morning, I, I don't know if I necessarily meant 6 a.m. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I was just ready. <laughs> I, I, I understand that, but you got to remember that I have that weird brain that's like, oh, well, then I have to record now. <laughs> so, yeah, you can wait a little bit, maybe maybe 7, 30, 8 o'clock. I'm okay then. I get my coffee at that point. <laughs> We got to do it raw, raw and live. Oh, that's what it's feeling like, man. It's feeling very raw. <laughs> well, yeah, you said you were on some sort of fucking cross country bonanza. Yeah, I took the family to uh, Washington D.C. I, uh, I I wanted to get arrested for yelling at people, but you know what? There's a lot of people yelling at people in Washington D.C. You really got to stand heads above the crowd. Yeah, yeah. What did you? What did you? What was your? What was your angle? How did you get? Uh, how did? How did you yell? to stand out enough to get personally arrested uh well i i didn't get personally arrested um i, oh, I was most i was mostly yelling about um uh, how terrible paramount plus's app is mm, their the entire app time. Is really, i was really like awful. i demanded legislation to fix that yeah that's that's fair their app is miserable i mean seriously why oh like in this day and age <laughs> what's what's wrong what's what's going on here people this is a terrible app, and they should I mean, be they, ashamed of themselves. They they clearly cheaped out. That's as simple as that. Yeah, I mean they they're riding high on its sweet sweet Trek and SpongeBob money. SpongeBob money? Is there a new SpongeBob? No, it's, it's SpongeBob's on Paramount Plus. And oh, just so just in general, yeah, just in general, yeah. They got that sweet SpongeBob money. That's true. I can't believe. Is it is it kind of weird that like SpongeBob is just still going? Um, kind of. Yeah, um, I, mean, I know that like the. The main guy who who did it like yeah, he, he died. died years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He died, and his one his one wish was that they never did a spinoff. And I believe they immediately started planning spinoffs. Yeah, who cares? It's capitalism. You don't get a choice in that. This is capitalism. You cannot avoid it. <laughs> got, exactly. Got to go to the one place uncorrupted by capitalism. It's Space. It's <laughs> like those those uh those yahoos who are protesting on Reddit. Like I get it. I, I get that you want to do this, but like we're gonna protest by blacking out our our subreddit for two whole days. Wow, you're great protesting there. Yeah, I I think they need to learn how a strike works. Yeah, I think they need to learn that like you don't protests don't work. Period. They don't in this day uh, and age. Not yeah, you, not you have in to the last twenty years. Yeah, what what's what is a, a, a I mean, I don't think a, there's been a successful protest in a very long time. No. I mean, the last successful protest was uh I think January 6th and they 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 were successful and didn't know what to do at that point and then they all got arrested. <laughs> That's very funny. I mean, it's true. They, it is true. Yes. So these idiots on Reddit, "Oh, we want to protest this change." We're going to do this. It's going to harm the website for two whole days. And not even everybody did it. Like only like a, f like a handful did maybe the biggest ones, but it was like, okay. And then everyone was like, they went outside and touched grass. Yeah. I mean, it, it did, dis it did disrupt some of my, some of my uh, searching that that's for sure. Yeah. Some, Cause yeah. you know, when, when you look for something, you're like, you're like, Oh, how do uh, you know, how do I beat this boss? And you're like, Oh, I'll click on this Reddit thread. And it's like, oh, I can't get in there. All right. Very good. Uh, I just won't. I just won't <laughs> I'll go, I'll go to YouTube and yeah, I'll go, video to figure it exactly. out. Exactly. I'll go to YouTube, get a, get a let's play. <laughs> get a, yeah, exactly. Uh, I was, uh, but, uh, on Paramount, on, on speaking of Trek, uh, strange new world started the new season. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, I, so, and, I have not, they, I have not started watching it yet, but that sounds awesome. Yes, they did. They did have the cringe moment from the trailer in the in the episode, which is the one where it's like, they're like, "What do you say when you're in the captain's chair?" You know, Spock's like, "May I want the ship to go now?" Oh yes, yes. It was very cringe. Uh, <laughs> oh no, cringe! Yeah, cringe! What would be what would be your captain's chair uh, thing to make the ship go? You know, like engage, make it. You know, oh, whatever. engage or hit it. Mm, what would yeah. be mine? Mm, I'm. Uh. Uh, let her fucking rip. Number one, <laughs> let her rip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
get her done. Yeah, exactly. get her done. <laughs> that would be mine. Get her done. Get her done. <laughs> it's like, all right, let's uh, prepare to engage in warp. Shitter's full. Shitter's full. Warp. <laughs> Shitter was full. Warp is engaged. Warp is engaged. Uh, my mine would probably be like something like uh like kick it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I'd have one. I yeah. think I'd be really. I think I'd be really. I think it'd be really boring. I think I'll just be like. I think it'd be like uh go to warp nine. <laughs> now. Like I I, yeah, I I don't think I would I don't think I would have like a, I I don't think I would have anything after that because I would just be like if my if my pilot didn't go to warp nine I'd be like. Ensign, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> He'd be like, sir, you didn't say, you know, engage or that. Why would I need to say fucking engage? I told you to go to warp nine. <laughs> I think it was, I think it was Stargate SG SG one on an episode where they were like, uh, uh, was it like, uh, prepare, prepare weapons for fire. And they're like, they're always prepared for fire. They're weapons. <laughs> and he's like, I don't know. I just thought it was the right thing to say. <laughs> That's funny. I, I think it was that I'm not hundred percent sure, um, but it was, it was an all right episode. I mean, it was, it was, you could tell it was very um, beginning of season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, but yes, I went, I went to Washington DC and I will tell you half of it was super cool and half of it was miserable. I mean, um, that, sound, that sounds like a trip. Yeah. I mean, there was like, we went and it, First of all, Maryland and Virginia, I have never been. Uh, I, I've been to Atlanta. That's as, as, as far south as I've went, but I've never been to like old like East Coast kind mm -hmm. of stuff. The roads there are the most miserable things I've ever seen in my life. I'm like, how can anybody understand how to get anywhere in this state? It's insane. Everything's a squiggly line. Nothing lines up. <laughs> hey that that's that's 200 years of united states urban development my friend <laughs> i mean exactly it's it's horrendous and then they they it's like you want to get it i don't even know how to describe it to to any listeners because in england they're probably like oh that's how the roundabout works out here but it's um but out out here it's a grid system you literally have streets that go up and down and left and right we don't have streets that kind of go squiggly unless you're in a subdivision. That's a completely different story. But like every major road is a is a straight line that goes either north or south or east or west. Right. But not anymore. It's not. You've experienced the truth, the reality, the veil has been pulled from your eyes. And when you go from like a system like that to the system out there, you're like, no wonder why these people vote Republican. They're morons. <laughs> it's in the water. It's in the roads, man. It's in the, the roads. roads. <laughs> I only saw two uh, mega chuds while I was out there, um, and they were both incredibly old ladies. Oh, yeah. I mean, tr Trump's Trump's. Uh, pr um. What is it? Uh, base? Reach, base? I don't know. His like, yeah, yeah. His, his base is like ex absolutely like the 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 vast majority. Like you think the vast majority are the dudes who have those Ray Bla Ray Ban sunglasses? Yeah, uh, Joe Rogan fans. Picks on Twitter's. Yeah, you think it's the Joe Rogan fans? It's actually old white women. I mean, it really is because the, like, they they, were... they are his demographic, and it's like it's it's crazy, but they are one hundred percent his demographic. Yeah, they were the only two that I saw wearing the actual uh, uh, MAGA hats. Oh, man, I I saw some clips from uh, uh, fucking Curb Your Enthusiasm. I was laughing my fucking ass off. Have you, have you seen uh, the MAGA hats uh, bit from Curb Your Enthusiasm? No. Oh, my God, it's so good. So Larry, so, so Larry's talking to his manager, and his manager's like, uh, yeah, I had to break my golf date with, uh, you know, uh steinbrenner because he was you know he's a fucking trump supporter you know, i don't want to be seen in public with him and and larry's like larry was just bitching about having to go to dinner with his friend and he's like and you just see him thinking he's like hmm and then it just cuts to a dinner <laughs> yeah it cuts to a dinner and this guy's walking he's like hey i've got a reservation and he's like oh yeah mr david is already here and he's like great and the dude walks in and he sees larry david just sitting at the sitting at the table and he's just got a big ass maga hat on and he's like hey come sit down <laughs> and the dude's like uh, my, you know what? Actually, my son just called. I have to go. So, so the entire episode is Larry David using the MAGA hat to get out of situations. I mean, that's that's a, uh, uh, I, I can see that working. It was Definitely. very funny. Yeah. yeah, it was. It cracked me up. He's like at the sushi bar. There's two. There's two seats open next to him, and the, these, this couple walks in. Like, oh look, there's seats open right at the sushi bar. And he looks. He picks up the MAGA hat off the chair. 
puts it on his head, smiles at them, and taps the chair. And they're just like, actually, we'll take a table. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it's, it's legit. Like, it is. Yeah, it's legit. Yeah, the uh, only only one person said anything to me. We were I was standing in line at Mount Vernon to see George Washington's uh, home, which was actually really cool. Um, that the whole George like Mount Vernon thing, very neat. I highly recommend it. Were you there? Were you there to Were you there to curse the founding fathers that they ever made this shitty country? <laughs> A little bit, <laughs> but the only one person in line uh, was in front of me, and they were like from I don't know South Carolina or something like that. But they were originally from New Jersey. Oh, of course. And they're this older couple. And I, we were just talking nice. And they're like, I, would, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm from Chicago. Um, and they're like, oh, yeah, a lot of people leave in Chicago. I'm like, no. Yeah, that's not true. <laughs> I, it, it, he was very shocked that I said that. I was like, no, that's not really true at all. I'm not sure where that's coming from. And he was like, oh, 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 oh. and it was just like, OK, you go on your tour. <laughs> yeah. Bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> go well, go go home and watch your Fox News. See ya. The one thing that I will say about Washington D.C. that I thought was really I don't want to say funny, but just like interesting was you notice how they tiptoed around slavery a lot in Washington D.C. <laughs> and they 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 would talk about things that I'd be like, oh, you mean slaves? And they're like, uh. Yeah, we're land of the free, where we had slaves longer than almost any other country. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's us. Where we still have slaves. Yeah, that's us. Yeah, United they, States. Mount Vernon did a very nice thing uh, about George Washington's slaves, but they would still like they had this very, very nice solemn ceremony. And, it you know, it was very moving. And then you go and then they'd never refer to them as slaves ever again. Outside of one thing, <laughs> they were servants. But uh, uh, yes, servants that aren't paid and can't leave. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then it was. I was just like, mm-hmm. but you know, it's there. It, it's just we gotta hate America so much. <laughs> and then it was um at the Capitol building. Uh, they were talking about every state because I went to the Capitol. It was pretty neat i wish i could have seen the actual gallery and so i could have yelled at some people about paramount plus zap <laughs> but the actual building has 50 you know, 100 statues in it and each state gets to donate one uh two statues right mm-hmm. so of course illinois statues are like some old ab- not abolitionist uh old temp uh yeah but anti-alcohol why, why can't i think of the name of it pro uh, prohibitionist that's oh, what prohibitionist I'm yeah yeah were they, prohibitionist were, were, were they called the Temperance League? Yeah, like a Temperance. That was the word I was looking for. This, yeah. this like, you know, battle axe lady, Temperance, you know, no alcohol statue from Illinois. And I was kind of like, I need to write to JB to get that switched. We need someone like, well, we need Eagle Man. We need an Eagle Man statue at the Capitol instead of this woman. My, my favorite, my favorite thing, I think all you need to do to sum up the Temperance movement is you just need to put that picture up that says the lips that touch liquor said shall not touch ours. And it's just like, the like most like disgusting haggard like gnarly looking women group of women i've ever seen in my entire life which cracks me up oh yeah it's yeah exactly and some (laughs) other guy from illinois that no one really knows i'm like "Eh." but uh they were like well right now there's only uh 99 statues here because uh Virginia, you can uh you donate the statues but you could also recall the statues only one statue is currently being recalled it's from virginia and I was like, it's Robert E. Lee, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> sure enough, I looked, I'm like, yep, Robert E. Lee. God damn it. <laughs> um, Fucking white people. Anyway. Uh, oh, uh, so let's let's talk, uh, since we, we, we talked at length. Oh, uh, highly recommend the American uh, History Museum. That was great. Uh, do not recommend the Natural History Museum. Except if you like rocks, they have a really fantastic rock collection there. Uh, but everything else is kind of dumb at the American Nat- at the Natural History Museum there. Eh, I'll just look at rocks online if I want to see any. Exactly, it's like the Field Museum is like a thousand times better, and it's uh the Field Museum has cool minis and they're painted to museum quality. They are painted well. So does the Smithsonian. So, uh, the Air and Space Museum is very cool. If you like airplanes, if you don't like airplanes, don't go to the Air and Space Museum. I, I was I was laughing. I, I laughed heartily at that Battleblon 5. Um, Battleblon 5. Yeah, that cracked me up. Yes, it was there. Um, 
what else? Uh, the the zoo was very cool. The national zoo was very cool. Um, I got to see the pandas and the Chinese uh, propaganda is super real there, hundred percent real. <laughs> like you go there and they're just like, China is so great. China is so great. China is so great. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, I mean, we need their money, Joe. I know, seriously. And I was, uh, I was like talking about China's panda diplomacy very loud and about how Richard Nixon ruined America by opening up relations with China. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Uh, I did see a person there wearing, um, like, I think it was a Donald Trump T-shirt. And I, I did talk about how awful Ronald Reagan was in front of them. So Nice. There yes. you go. Yeah. So that, that was that. I, I It was actually kind of fun just to talk, like, openly about, like, because, you know, it's the Ronald Reagan administrative building. So you get to stand out there and talk about how shitty Ronald Reagan was. And some people walking past really love Ronald Reagan. So good. Fuck him. <laughs> yeah. Uh. But yeah, we 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 cross country road tripped it. We did a full twelve hours in the van to Washington D.C. and back. Got to stop at Pittsburgh and have a permanti sandwich. It was delicious. Not, I'm not gonna lie, this 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 sounds like a, a torturous excursion. <laughs> it was actually real nice. <laughs> um, the uh, you know, the problem is just inflation. The prices are so high on fucking everything. But anyway, I believe uh, you mean gouging. Let's talk gaming stuff. Let's talk gaming. Let's talk gaming. So they've been. Re- leaking or not leaking, but releasing all of the new rules for the new Warhammer 10th, and people yeah. are losing their absolute minds. Well, uh, I, I would I would argue that a, a small minority of people are losing their absolute minds, and that small minority of people are the people who are going to bitch about this edition, literally no matter what it is. Steve, would you say it's time to crack open our heads and eat the fluid inside? Uh, I think any 40k fan extremely upset about 10th edition should uh, immediately challenge the very closest 40k fan who is extremely upset about 10th edition into a combat to the death. Uh, combat to the that, death, you say? Yes, I think that is. <laughs> I think that's the way to get it all out of your system. Uh, once there is one last person standing who is really upset about 40k 10th edition, um, we'll crown him the champion Grognard as he has slain all the other bitch made losers complaining about their game. Um, and uh, yeah, he'll get he'll get a little crown. We'll give him a free box of Space Marines and send him on his way. To shreds, you say. <laughs> to shreds, you say. <laughs> <laughs> huh. What about his wife? Oh, to shreds, you say. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, basically, they're they're moving in the route of Age of Sigmar, which I think is a smarter route for 40K, uh, where you're buying units instead of individual figures. Yep. Uh, I think a lot of people are upset about that because of min-maxing on certain... Um, uh, uh you know builds yeah just look who is actually upset like the people who are the biggest dicks to play against are the people who are upset so who fucking cares <laughs> like that's that's that that's who's upset like people who are super upset are the biggest assholes you never want to play the game against anyway so you're good like <laughs> simple you're as good. that you're good <laughs> just ask me you know because i mean they're still going to be playing the edition basically if they start the game if they if they if they're looking for a game and they're already bitching about 10th edition don't play that guy yeah, that's, that's a good that's a good way of looking at it. Um, the like, you know that's, that's something weird too. Like, I I in my older age with Games Workshop games, I've come to appreciate much smaller armies to build and paint. Mm-hmm. Like I, like when I'm setting out to build something, uh, let's just say old world that I'm working on right now. I'm like, okay, I want to do Old World. I'm going to do 2,000 points of Old World. I'm going to build out a 2,000-point Bretonian army, and that's going to be it. That's all I'm going to do for these Bretonians is 2,000 points. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to build these massive fucking armies and everything else. No, this is it. And you know what? If this isn't the optimal build, eh, whatever. Right. Yeah, you know, just build, build, a, build an army that looks cool. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's I, I just don't – Simple people, as that. Like, 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 yeah, the, my army looks cool. It, it looks like an army. I'm good. And people are bitching about the uh, point costs, right? Point costs have been leaked, I believe. No, they're, they're not leaked. They were they were officially revealed. They were officially released. Okay. Yeah. And it's like, oh, these point costs, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, these aren't the real point costs. They just kind of th- slapped this together so that you'd have something. And then the official thing is going to get released, and that's what you get to deal with. Yeah. It's and, not and like the, I don't, it's like Age of Sigmar has clearly been the test bed for most 40K rules changes for a very long time. And I'm like, 
I, it's not that I'm annoyed. I'm just like, how do they not realize that that is how it's going to work? Like every time there was like a really positively received change for AOS and people were like, wow, this, this is really good. Like, good job. Like what a good change. That change slowly made its way into 40 K every <laughs> time. Yeah. And, and people just get crazy about it. Whatever. Um, well, like I said, I mean, people were bitching like like they're, they, they'll bitch up and down that the game needs rules changes and it's really bad and they, it needs to be fixed. And then they come up with big rules changes and like, you know, big things and they bitch about that. So, <laughs> I mean, it's what whatever. It's it's nuts. It's like the people. I think about... it looks I think, it's, it, I think it looks very fun. I think it looks like a very good addition of 40K. It'll be fun. Yeah, I, I'm I'm hoping that one of the things that Games Workshop really needs to do, I think in my own opinion, is they really need to pare back the amount of shit they have for Space Marines or limit some of that shit to very specific Space Marines. Mm -hmm. um, there's too many fucking tanks, too many fucking flyers, uh, troops, you know, firstborn, primaris. There's too much shit. You got to pare it back. Um, they could, uh, they could, they, you could always split the army into uh, chunks. That's a, that's a thing that could, well, it's not saying like very specific, like, you could only take this unit if you're doing this sort of thing. And I think just phase it out in general. Mm. It's like there is too much choice. I don't I don't know if I don't know if that'll ever reply to Space Marines. I, I you're probably right. But I I think it's it's necessary in order to make the game more long lasting. It's like there's too much stuff, too many armies. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, it, they'll probably I mean, I, I guess like the Stormcast kind of have the same thing going, but the I don't no, not know. as I mean, much as Space Marines. No, 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 not as much as Space Marines. But what the 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 design thing for Stormcast. So here's here's what I don't like. I don't know if this applies to Space Marines, but here's about Storm uh, Stormcast. The difference in Stormcast don't actually have too much choice, in my opinion, because you can like because the Stormcast chambers are like broken up, which I assume are the same thing for fucking Space Marines at this point. But um, if you play a Stormcast army, like you can. Like right now, you can just be like, okay, I'm going to grab everything from this chamber and be like, okay, so so we're good. So like, if you do the the sacrosanct, so like the wizards, like you can still just make a sacrosanct army. And the way that the stormcast stuff is designed is that it just it interacts pretty well with the other stuff that uh is in the same chamber. So like, you know, yeah. like the, the sacrosanct leader gives casting bonuses. So like, yeah, that's an additional choice, but like you're not just going to take that model. Like, it's not just something you're just like, oh, I'm going to grab this. It's like, cause it's clearly a buff for the casters and yeah, but, so on and so forth. I assume it's like that for 40K, but I don't know. No, not at all. No. Um, okay. Yes, in theory, like, yeah, you have the Blood Angels and you have the Space Wolves, right? Space Wolves can only take this, Blood Angels can only take that. But it's only like a few things, like one or two things that are very army specific. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is all just generic. You're dealing from a giant pool of stuff that everybody can play with and like one or two things that only your army can play with. That's how I it see. works. I mean, yes, there's definitely better gestalt builds. Like you're not going to take bikes if you have a predator because of blah, blah, blah. Right. Mm -hmm. Like there, that's not an optimal build, but that's, that's kind of how that works. But anyway, um, that's the big thing. Leviathan, I think it's dropped next week, I think. Right? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Like the 24th or whatever? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I will not be picking it up <laughs> because I have no desire to play 40K whatsoever. Uh, I will also not be picking it up um, because I have no desire to pick it up. <laughs> I am I am going to go full on um, historicals. I'm just going to play obscure uh war games from now on i'm not gonna be playing any of these big games anymore done. <laughs> you've done it i will i will only be playing uh tomahawks and muskets or muskets and tomahawks <laughs> whatever which, which whatever one is called it is a uh game about the french indian war um i'm excited to play it uh play i hope you all are too Milis gloriosis <laughs> yes i'm gonna be playing uh ducks uh wait what is, what is it lux uh, no What's that called? Something Balorum. Uh, it's a really fun, like generic fantasy mass battle system. I really I, love I'll, it. I'll say I, I figured you were. I thought you were going to bust out Peltast and Pilla. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, Peltast and Pilla is the old. The, is like the crustiest game I could think of. The that's, an old, that's an old. That's a that's a that's a fucking historical war game from the seventies. So like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. If I... 
I'm, tr- I'm trying know. to think of like what, what I'm going to pull out all my old Donald Featherston books. How about that? We'll just play Ooh. with those. <laughs> it's the oldest thing I can think of. Like those rule sets where he's just like, now you have a boat. <laughs> there's a there's a civil war uh, i'm looking it up apparently there's a civil war game named hard tack from the 70s Ooh, so but are they actual like mini war games or are they like it's an introduction with gary gygax this is definitely a minis war game Ooh, gary gygax yeah gary gygax. <laughs> you want to you want to talk about his shit lord son oh yeah let's go <laughs> it was a good transition because it was actually on my list of things to discuss new tsr has folded for bankruptcy because Gary Gygax, who was kind of a shitlord, let's be honest, uh, his son Wasn't is he, even I more actually of a shitlord. I actually, I, I, I don't know anything about Gary Gygax, so yeah. I don't know. If I mean, I, but he was like, it's it's hard to describe, but it's like he was an eighty shitlord, and like, I'm always I'm the one who's struggling always with this transition of, like, nerd stuffs for everyone. And it's like, no, back in the day, nerd stuff wasn't for everyone. You got you got beat up if you like nerd stuff. And mm. uh, like Gary Gygax was that kind of right wing, like, <laughs> well, I'm not racist. I hate everyone equally. He was that kind of guy. Uh, I see. Oh, yeah. No, apparently, apparently he is kind of a was kind of a huge shitlord. Yeah, he he wrote some stuff that was like, ah, yeah, he was a right wing, like, right wing fundamentalist. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean. But it's like you have to look at it in context. Like, uh, like the stuff he was writing about in the eighties was not, or seventies and eighties was not very much outside of popular thought, right? True, 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 true. Yeah. So I mean, it's not an excuse, but it's, it's like, not an you know. excuse, but it's like it wasn't that bad for the nineteen eighties. Yeah, it wasn't out of pocket. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've read some sci-fi stuff from the nineteen eighties that I'm just kind of like, ah, okay. Oh, yeah. Huh. I mean, like Star Trek, my favorite thing in the world does have the line like one day she'll find a husband and leave us, you know, kind of thing. It's true. And and Star Trek Next Generation, uh, an extraordinarily progressive show for the 80s, has possibly the most radi- racist episode of television I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But anyway, yeah, New Trek, I don't New Trek, New TSR, which is Gary Gygax's son's company. I think they made seven hundred dollars last year. Yeah, uh, half a million dollars in debt. I think their operating income was like seven hundred bucks. Uh, and shocker, their 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 lawsuit that they were absolutely going to get obliterated by uh, Hasbro in court anyway uh, has now been put on hold because they can't afford, afford it to, yeah. to pay for it. Yeah, they yeah. have a uh, yeah two two uh, two hundred. All right, here we go. I got the I got the I got the actual stats, baby. Also, part of the reason we need tort reform in this country. Uh, but aside that, go ahead. Six hundred twenty-one dollars and ninety-three cents gross income in twenty twenty-three, uh, which means if if for, for those to keep track at home, they made about a hundred bucks a month, <laughs> yeah. and they have a debt exceeding three hundred thousand uh, dollars. Yeah, so they they their bankruptcy, so their 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 lawsuits were put on hold. Um, yeah, no, they're they're done, and I think this is the third TSR. I think Something like that. Yeah. yeah, there's there's a lot, uh, and and this is the one that Watsi filed an injunction against because they were like, you know, you're because because their their RPG was like they they made like the the they made the racism RPG. Yes, the uh, racism RPG. Th- they they did. Like, did you actually look at some of the stuff that's in their yeah. fucking thing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they made the racism RPG. So Wizards was like, um, yeah, we're gonna injunction that because there is <laughs> there is a weird subculture of racism RPGs out there, and I don't get it. Like, I just don't get it. It's because there's just there's just, there's a shit ton of fucking right wing racist racist nerds, and they they don't want to see anyone other than other right wing racist. I, nerds. I know, but it's like the entire RPG is based around um like being a shit lord and it's like i don't understand why oh yeah here it is lulu publishing uh has a rpg out there called shit lord the triggering yeah um, so like these 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 people are so poisoned mentally and politically like they cannot exist without being mad about uh like they cannot go a day without just being furious and what they're furious about is, you know, frivolous nonsense that they believe is extremely important, like, you know, uh, black people existing. 
Uh, yeah. That's 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 a big one, uh, and so they they absolutely have to have everything. So, so it's you know it's like it's kind of like it's kind of like being a super. So not not the racism part. Don't don't take offense, Star Wars fans. But it's kind of like being a Star Wars fan. Like, <laughs> do, you, do you know how like you know like the the Star Wars mega fan like everything kind of gravitates back towards the Star Wars no matter what. Yes. These this is the exact same. So like they only I only play Star Wars games. So it's the same thing except everything for them gravitates back towards their racism and bigotry. So. Ipso facto, I only play racist and bigot bigotry games. Yeah. Um Simple I, as that. I, That's I, their I, identity. I, They're a part of the fandom. They're part of the being a shitlord fandom. Yeah. I should send you this uh this website I, I just found called Gaming While Conservative. <laughs> It hasn't had an update since 2017, and I'm assuming that's because Donald Trump got elected and this guy just reached such peak ecstasy that he ascended to a higher being. Uh, Well, I mean, possibly, or, 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 uh, you know, maybe that person uh, is dead because they got COVID. <laughs> <laughs> also a possibility. Um, Maybe not in 2017. I'm just, you know, like. Like Donald Trump got elected and all of the atoms in his body started vibrating faster and faster and faster until he had just ascended to a higher plane of being. <laughs> there you go. Uh, um, all right. Uh, uh, almost bad time for transitioning because I got to I got to stop the podcast in a, in a few minutes. Um, but yes, the uh, the the fucking TSR is go the new TSR is gone. Yay. Yeah. Um, I, I, I good, would wish good that... riddance to bad rubbish. Yeah. I, I mean, at this point, TSR is almost a, um, what's that? What I'm, what's the word I'm looking for? Not a, not a pariah, but just a brand that can't really, you can't do much with TSR anymore. It doesn't no. mean what it used to. No, it's a, it's a, it's a poison. It's a poison brand. There you go. It's a poison brand. I think I, I, what it should be used for is something like, um dungeon crawl classics or like that some just like some person who just wants to write old school D, &D style uh rpgs and just that's what the fun they have with it you know or or you could use it to do re like if you want to slap tsr on something put it on something that makes sense so for example if you're doing a new version of gamma world why don't you put tsr on that but why would you do gamma world I don't know. People like Gamma World. There was actually a resurgence of Gamma World in D&D 4th Edition. I did. I remember the, the, the Gamma World 4th Edition box set that came out. I don't really yeah. understand it myself, but it did come out. I like, what was it? Was it you and I were talking about it? Like where uh, the new Eberron box set and uh, it's like, it's a box set. It's it's not, what you keep calling a box set is not a box set. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a slipcase. It's a slipcase. It's not a box set. Yeah, it's not a box set. It's a slipcase. A box. A box set has more than books. Yeah, the the tyranny, of, not tyranny of dragons. The Dragonlance box set that they came out with for the game, the deluxe set. That is a. That's box a box set. set. That's yes. very much a box set. Yes, that's 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 a hundred percent a box set. It has I a wish, board game in it. <laughs> yeah. I wish that that t uh, the TSR. I wish that uh, the wizards would put out nice box sets for the games. I think that if they had, they did the excellent Strahd one. The one yeah. that's shaped like a coffin, but that's that was the, great. That was the Strad. That was the revamped one. Yeah, but that so was definitely they, a box set. Because one thing that I hate with the new books is is that they come with maps, and the, but the maps are perforated on the back of the book, right? I hate that. I don't want to tear the map out of the book. That makes me mad. That makes me. <laughs> I can't rationally do it. Uh, there are some separate map packs. I know, but I'd have to buy the map separately. That with these books should just come with the map separate in a box, a nice box, just like a little a little box that comes with the book, some maps. Hey man, I ain't disagreeing with you. I love box sets. I think box sets are great. Like I, I think that's I think that's a, that is a lost art. <laughs> it it real. Well, I mean, it's not a lost art. Some things still do really nice box sets. It, it's very rare nowadays. It's not like it used to be where everything came in a box set. But I I think it's it's much much rarer in this day and age. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I mean, the last the last really good one I have is a reprint of one from the 80s, you know, the Call of Cthulhu one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the last company that really did box sets was, um, oh, who did uh, Wifrup Fourth? Was that? Um, oh, Fantasy Flight. Was that Fantasy Flight? Yeah. yeah. Fantasy Flight did Wifrup Fourth and all of their stuff was box sets. Yeah. That Fantasy was... Flight did a shit in a box sets for RPGs, actually. They were the last one. 
Yeah. But they were also they suffered from the fact that everything in that game needed to be in a box set because it was massive chits and everything else in there. Right. Because it wasn't really like a normal RPG. It was like a it was like a quasi board game. Yeah, it's I've been going through it. It's actually a really interesting system. I like it quite a bit. Oh, I love I love fourth edition Warhammer Fantasy. I think it's I, the, our, the fourth edition Warhammer Fantasy RPG. I think it's great. I think yeah, it's, fantastic, it's actually but... a really, really interesting system. Yeah, it's very cool. Um, but it's it's definitely you know it's own, it's definitely its own thing. Yeah, I uh, don't. It's it's really hard. It's not. It is not an RPG. More. It's it's really much more of a board game. Yeah, yeah. It's like um, it's like it is kind of like a hybrid. It really feels like a hybrid. Um, yeah, <laughs> like like Gloomhaven. No, <laughs> not, not <laughs> as much as Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven is more like okay. Well, no, that's a good comparison. Okay, you have Gloomhaven and you have Wifrip Fourth. With the fourth is like a um, hybrid that leans a little bit more to the role playing side. Gloomhaven is a hybrid that leans a little bit more to the board game side. Yeah, I'd say that's about right. Does that that sound about right? Yeah, no, that 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 seems like a pretty apt uh placement. But where would you put Frosthaven? Uh, a minis game? I don't know. I, I fucking know. oh no, oh Frosthaven. I, I I thought of I thought of Frostgrave. No, 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 Frostgrave. Yeah. Uh, isn't Frosthaven the exact same game as Gloomhaven with just new scenarios it's, yeah, and shit? Just, yeah, it's just yeah. it's it's like everything's yeah. white. I, I don't know. Glo- Gloomhaven infuriated me, so I was like, nope, not not playing that game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a pause here, and then we'll come back. All right. Um, I, uh, I because because you brought it up, I had to look. I had to see if uh, there was a if if Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay is one of the uh, is a is a su- surprisingly. Not actually that expensive. What the fourth edition stuff? Um, the third edition, third edition, third edition, third, third edition third, was the third the edition. One. Is, third edition is the fancy flight one. Fourth, fourth edition is the fourth edition is the, um, the current one. Current one, yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, hold on a second. Let me. I have to consult my giant tome collecting list to make sure that you are correct on this one. Yeah, because because when I look for fourth, you are edition, you I'm... are correct because the second edition one is the one is the classic one. Yes, that I like with the the really nice hardcover books. Yes, that's the that's a, that's a good one. Yes, yeah, so I had to look and like, I mean, it's not cheap. Like, don't get me wrong, it's not cheap, but it's surprisingly like not as expensive as I would expect. Like, there's one like it looks like you can get a complete version for like I don't know, like a hundred bucks. Which... Yeah, the. So that's when, not that's not normal fantasy flight out of print game pricing. <laughs> so when third edition went out of print, when they it, like, I think it was like 2014 ish mm-hmm. uh, when they lost the license for it, they sold off everything dirt cheap. So I ended up buying a bunch of it just for pennies on the dollar. Mm-hmm. I think most of it was at Gen Con because they had like the, the little um, auction store and they had a ton of stuff there for like box sets for three bucks so i bought most of it there the only thing that i didn't have well i didn't have a couple pieces that i ended up getting later for relatively cheap but i got the the main core fantasy the main box for like i think i was like 40 bucks nice off ebay and so i i have a, a pretty nice collection there's a few things that i'm missing um some of the later stuff especially mm. you know because that's always the way with fantasy flight is there later later in the run stuff just never got to stores right <laughs> so i mean that was like even the same with second edition was like there was a lot of the later stuff in second edition was very very rare um and very expensive now yeah for sure yeah because they because they printed like really really small amounts yeah i'm who did second edition uh i think second edition was fancy flight no hold on a second I'm not. I thought. I thought. I thought it was Fancy Flight, and then they did Third Edition, and never. That's why everyone was on tilt. I might be wrong, but I thought they may have gotten some of the later, like, because it was originally published under Black Industries, Mm -hmm. which I believe is is in house GW, correct? Yes. Yeah, that was in house GW back in in the early 2000s, and I think it may have switched to Fancy Flight, who took over publishing for the end run of Second Edition. Mm, Okay. I think that's how it works, anyway. (laughs) <laughs> welcome to obscure gaming talk <laughs> uh, welcome to the obscure gaming talk if, if i talked about my idea of the barbarian split for with you about the barbarian split no i have not i've not heard this i do not i think that what dungeon dragons needs to do is they need to get rid of barbarian as a class um i think barbarian should be kind of like 
a background thing as opposed to a class thing. Okay. So like DJ, like I I think this is just in my head as as I've been f- well, focusing on my D and D game. Mm-hmm. I like the idea of characters being able to choose. I am going to either have an urban or a rural background. Like I'm a city dweller, or I'm basically from you know the nomadic plains. Mm-hmm. So barbarian is not necessarily like a class, but you could have a barbarian wizard kind of thing. Like, are you a city wizard or are you a country wizard? Oh, like an urban or yeah, thing. yeah. And barbarian would be kind of like that. Like, I am a barbarian wizard because there, there are barbarian tribes out there, and there are obviously wizards who are in the barbarian tribe. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the this is, they should have. This I believe you would call that class a shaman. Yeah, like like that. Except it's like a fucking huge muscular wizard who like can fucking cast you know lifts weights and cast spells joe right. you're 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 creeping ever so close to realizing that class-based rpgs kind of suck yes <laughs> no i'm with you on this yeah <laughs> but i just need i need people to understand it actually i see that more and more on D forums now it's like people just going like the more i look into it the more fifth edition kind of sucks <laughs> <laughs> that was i liked your i liked your post um uh man who complains about fifth edition has massive fifth edition collection <laughs> yes exactly I man who does nothing but bitch about fifth edition has massive fifth edition yeah i'm not having it because i absolutely like the game that's my future right there that's my investment <laughs> that's your investment these are my stocks baby well you saw i sent you that post about um was it rise of tiamat yeah the only book that's been discontinued for fifth edition and it's, it's worth a fortune like double cover price yeah well and then of course all the all the um the hobby covers are, you know, ridiculous. Yeah. And I feel real bad about that, but I'm not going to start collecting. I, the only reason I'm not collecting. <laughs> excuse me. Hold on. <clears throat> Fucking coffee. The only reason I'm not collecting the collector's edition covers is because the spines look different and I don't want different spines on my shelf. I like them mm. all looking the same. All right. Yes. So I can't have half my collection looking one way and half the other way. doesn't work like that for me. I might do that with with the new uh, edition with with not sixth edition coming out. I might get some of. The, I might start off getting the collector's covers on that one, but we'll okay. see on that one. Yeah, I got to see how the books look in comparison to the fifth edition books. Do they look generally different? Do they look very different? That sort of thing. Mm, right, right, right. Yeah, because I'll tell you what, man, that the rate that D and D prices are climbing. If this if sales of disco continue like they're going, <laughs> if, these, if these trends continue, a exactly that's the way I'm looking at it. <laughs> um, one thing that I uh that I saw that I thought you might be uh interested in. Did you see that they are, uh, Privateer Press is like halting production? No, I did not see that. So they are. I th- this came out just I think last week sometime if they were talking about uh they are moving production of war machine and hordes to a new facility so they're pausing production uh and they they told everyone like hey if you want to order from us you got to order before june 14th because we can't do anything other than online orders after that Mm -hmm. so they're all of their production facility is being moved and i'm wondering what that looking like what's the decision behind that um What's going on there? They're probably moving to, I mean, I would imagine they're going to move to a smaller facility because because they're 3D printing everything now, so they probably don't need to have whatever they were doing before. I mean, that's what I'm kind of wondering. Like, are they moving straight to all 3D printed? What about all the old metals? Um, oh, yeah, no. Th- okay, so I'm, I'm looking at that. It's, it's just the legacy models. Okay. Legacy model production is ending. Uh, yeah, we'll, be, we'll end manufacturing. Uh, oh, oh this, this is not coming back either. You don't think uh, it's coming back? No, no. So it says we will end manufacturing of our legacy War Machine and Hordes models, as well as Riot Quest models made in cast metal and resin at the end of this week. After Friday, only online store items, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if there's a legacy item you've been considering purchasing, we encourage you to do so by Wednesday the 14th because it will. we cannot guarantee it will be in stock. Uh, during this transition, some Monster Apocalypse and Warcaster models may also be out of print for a period of time. Uh, we'll restore their availability as soon as possible. Uh, but yeah straight up like they're they're done like they're not coming back the only thing that's coming back are monster, the monster apocalypse and warcaster models so there you go legacy yeah. models 
Done. They're not making them anymore. No Done. more metal. Done. No more metal. So there you go. That's why they're moving facility because they don't need to do. They don't need to make metal models anymore. Yeah. It's, well, hey, three. If they got a good three D printing like facility, I mean, you could probably start up a decent online order three D printing facility for, I don't know, less than three thousand dollars of capital. Well, I'd say five. Let's say five thousand dollars investment. You could set up a three D printing facility with enough resin that you could fulfill orders at a regular basis. Yeah. And I think you could do really well with it. The and as I say, I think it's really I I know I'm on a, I'm on my soapbox about this, and I've I've mentioned it many times before. I think most game stores are really really stupid if they don't have a 3D printer in house. I mean, Which it's is, kind of a it's kind of a hassle, and someone has to know how to use it. So well, I mean, it, but they're not hard. I think I think it should be an objective. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's not a hard thing to to do. I I can do it. <laughs> like I, I don't know. I've be... seen I've seen I've seen the way models get three printed out. They look like a pain in the fucking ass. Yeah, well, I mean, what I'm saying is, is like if Joe can do it, you can do it. Like just this stick that in your head. Like that's the way <laughs> I think about any sort of home repair. Is like my uncle can replace a a uh a, a hot water heater. If he can replace a hot water heater, I can replace a hot water heater. <laughs> I have two master's degrees. I can replace a hot water heater. <laughs> I just installed a bidet at my house. Oh, a bit it. Yeah, it's it's, it's wonderful on the on the on the I, I'm a bidet fan. Yes. Everyone should be a bidet fan. I call it Neptune's kiss. I wish oh. I had uh I wish I had one of those fancy Japanese toilets that play music. <laughs> Thank you for depositing your waste. Yes, that's right. <laughs> you just want one that goes yum yum num 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 num. <laughs> <laughs> yummy 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 yummy. <laughs> Give me that poop. Um, uh, I'm boring your poo. <laughs> I kept telling my kids it's a water fountain. <laughs> uh, that's fantastic. Uh, it's gross. But the uh, yeah, the the uh, what was I going to say? The 3D printing. Every every store should have it in there. They should have a catalog of what a person can order and just say like, "Hey, I want this figure." Okay, just pay right now and we'll have it for you whenever. This is how much mm -hmm. it costs. It's going to be far cheaper than anything else you're buying in the store. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's the way I'm I'm thinking on it. I've been uh I've been printing stuff for D&D. &D. I've been painting it with contrast. It's been a lot of fun. I've Can, uh, can you uh can you get uh can you get your your custom Hero Forge figure as an STL? Cuz I mean, yeah. that would yeah, well, there you go. You should just have, you should have the Hero Forge stand ready to go at your uh, at your game store. And you're like, yeah, make your RPG characters here. I think it's like you can design it, and then they for like whatever price they they will send you the STL. So then you'd have, or or you could get it physically printed. So they would send. This is the way it used to be. I don't know if this is still the way it is, but you could get the STL and then just print it at home, or you could actually have it printed by them and shipped to you. Mm. Um, but I, they may have changed that. I mean, there was one point in the early heady days of 3d printing, there was a, a crack for hero forge. So you used to be able to just steal the STLs for home <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't, that no longer exists, but it, it was, a uh, it was fun for, for a brief shining moment. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, any other, uh, tabletop stuff, uh, on your, on your purview. No, I don't think so. No, nothing, nothing too crazy. No, I don't think so, man. Yeah, yeah. Got, not, not, not a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of. We always talk about this: is the doldrums of summer. Not much gets released. Um, the GW uh, 40k release is the big thing, and 40k is the most boring thing in War Games Workshops. So it's like, it's like you can't even talk about it anymore. It's like talking <laughs> sports when you're talking 40k. <laughs> Every, we like sports. We don't care who knows baseball, soccer, hockey, golf. Yeah. Hey, man. You know what? You don't. What do you get against soccer? Uh, man City. Man takes the Champions Cup. They've won everything this year. Football. What's Man City? Man City. They're they're. Is, is that a city team. exclusively of only men? Yes. Manchester. Ah, uh, Manchester. You. Yes. No. 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 Not United. This is a different city. This is a different Premier League team in Manchester. Ah, I see. So there is both Manchester United and Manchester City. Why do they call him the Bullet Dodger? Because he, he dodges, dodges bullets. bullets. <laughs> Best thing about that movie is still the line, 
we have beaches here, Abby. Well, who the fuck wants to see them? <laughs> I, I'm a big fan of when uh, it just cuts to Bullet Tooth Tony smashing the dude's head in the car door and he picks up the phone and he's like, bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> he's, it's a lucky star by Madonna, I believe. Yep. You might be my lucky star. I love this track. <laughs> I love this track. Um, but yes, the, the, it, well, you, you don't like, you haven't been watching Ted Lasso? No, I don't watch Ted Lasso. <laughs> I, I figured you would not watch I, Ted Lasso. I, I, I don't know who that, I, I don't find that guy who plays Ted Lasso to be particularly funny. I think it looks stupid. I don't know. I hate the, I hate stuff. I'm a I grump. St- I'm a grump. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I don't like anything unless it's a part 600 of an anime series that's been running since 1974. Nah, dude, I can't, I can't do those. I can't do those super long. Yet. Like if, if it's got, if, if it's got more than 60 episodes, I'm probably immediately out. <laughs> like a, like a one piece. You can't watch the one piece. I, 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 hear, I hear one piece is extremely good and has an extremely small amount of filler percentage wise. I think it's like 3% of that show is filler, which is ridiculous. Cause Naruto is like, like 40% filler. Um, <laughs> But like, so I hear it's are great. Are you in Naruto? I'm, are you in a Rutu? Uh, but I, I just, I, I can't. I, I'm not doing a thousand because, like, I, if I could, I could watch a thousand episodes of One Piece, or I could watch like, you know, a shit ton of other shows with the same amount of time spent. Isn't isn't like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure on like episode five billion? JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is a weird one because JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is it's it's long, but JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is broken into parts. So like, if you wanted to, you could just watch like any part of jojo's like you would you wouldn't necessarily get the reference uh but it's like like if they if they reference old stuff you wouldn't necessarily get that stuff but it doesn't matter because it's, it's just a fucking it's just a punch show anyway but um it's like season three of picard where you don't have to watch seasons one and two because it is yes yeah. it is like that it's like if you watch the other stuff you'll get specific references but like in most cases every part is it is pretty is pretty standalone even if characters show up from previous parts like not knowing what happened in the previous parts ne- is never relevant. Like you don't need to know what happened in part two, uh, because Joseph Joestar is in part two and he's in part three as well. But like you don't actually know that. Also, there's surprisingly not that many episodes of of uh, the anime. Believe it or I, not, I don't know the anime. That's fine. I'm telling you. That's why I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, it's it's not as long as you'd. Ex- I'll just say it's not as long as you'd expect. Uh, does it, like- does it have the the spider vagina like Wicked City? Oh God, no! But that's so cool. <laughs> I love Wicked City. <laughs> well, everything I know about anime is based off the old Anime Fridays that they used to show on Public Access Channel Twenty Six. So, so anything that was done by uh, manga. Yeah, wh- whatever. You know, it's like I, I watched Ghost in the Shell. I watched Wicked City. <laughs> I watched uh, Akira. What else did I watch? Oh, uh, Lens Man. Lens Man. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Fucking weird anime shit that i watched back then oh yeah the Diver. It's, yeah it's basically like everything was done by manga entertainment like they were they were it's it's interesting because i don't even think they exist anymore and for the longest time they were anime in the united states like period like they had like every like basically every single thing you said except for uh akira was, was, a, was a manga entertainment uh joint <laughs> even lens man even Lensman, yeah, dude, they 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 licensed fucking everything. Like that was their thing, and they used to do. They used to play that uh, the fucking um awesome trailer to uh KMFDM Ultra. Ooh, that was that was the that was the manga entertainment trailer. It was K, KMFDM Ultra was the thing. I'll, oh, I'll post, I remember I, KMFDM. Uh, yeah, I like KMFDM. I, I'll I'll post I'll post. I do the... not like KMFDM, but I remember KMFDM. Oh, you like KMFDM? I like KMFDM. What am I? Um, what am I getting? What am I in? Am I in a a, a mid two thousands cardio class full of middle aged women? That's the only people listening to KMFDM that I could ever think of. Yeah, the only people who ever listened to KMFDM were actual like cardio instructors. They're yeah. the only ones who ever and listened. I'm, to KMFDM. And I'm staring. And I'm staring at their ass. Yeah. Uh, here, I'm, gonna, I'm, post, I'm posting this in uh I'm posting this in general in the uh in the uh in the cast. Uh you Rob Zombie, I like Dracula. I like that song. <laughs> it's like every time I hear like Rob Zombie, oh. I just think of like those videos of the 2000s of the Muppets doing like popular songs, and it's not them actually singing anything, it's just them making noises. Yes. 
So I think of like the Swedish chef doing KMFD and uh, doing Rob Zombie going. Oh, I, I think I think you could I think you could do the uh, yes yes. And then and then he he does the whole dirty slam in the back of my Dragula. He's like, and then like the lobsters come out and they're like in the background going click 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 click. You know that sort of thing. Yeah. And then he makes the monsters. All right. You could go to uh, the Game Classy Facebook page. It's the best way to get in contact with us. Or actually, actually, it's the best way to find our Discord link. And our Discord link, we post it every every two weeks on there underneath the current episode. Um, it usually expires after one week, but you know we usually get most of our hits for it after the first week anyway. Um, that'll take it to the Discord. We have a very active on our Discord talking with our fans and fellow listeners, um, grumpy old British people. Um, some, and some, some, and some Kiwis and some Kiwis. I don't think um, we have any Aussies. I think um, we've got, I think we've got, I think we've got people from like kind of everywhere except for Australia. Yeah. Well, if you're from Australia, say hi. Um, we do have some Canadians. I know that, um, one French guy and all he does is complain about our cigarettes. Um, that's, that's fair. <laughs> I still like my still my favorite thing. My favorite uh, Pat B. One of my favorite Pat B. Moments is him just going when when he went to Italy for his uh, honeymoon. He was like, "You were right. They do smoke like it's their job." (laughs) That's great. Um, You can uh, if you want to get in. If you the best way to help out the podcast, like, comment, subscribe on iTunes, or like, comment, subscribe on the the YouTube's where I also. Posted on there for some odd reason because YouTube stuff. If you want to get in YouTube music is set up so you can actually filter podcasts now. So it's kind of nice. Fucking YouTube. (laughs) We could never get anything out of YouTube because we uh, I swear too much. I can't I'd, I'd be instantly demonetized. Uh, you know, it has to. So it, it, the, I believe the, the current, uh, the current, uh, translations of the scrolls, are that you you can't swear within the first twenty minutes or oh. ten minutes? Uh, that's the current uh, interpretation of the reading the runes because YouTube doesn't tell you its policies. Believe it or not, they they don't actually mm. like. This is one of the things that like people like like uh, I I have people talk about all. I see people talk about all the time. YouTube does not tell you what is going to get your channel demonetized. They just demonetize your channel. <laughs> So you have so you have to figure it out later. So I watch I watch a guy who does a lot of horror games, and he's like he's like yeah he's like this video got demonetized. He's like I don't know why because like this video didn't because he's like he's comparing the games, and he it's funny because he likes to he likes to try and pull back the curtain on YouTube because he's like you know it's it's kind of fun. But he's like I'm trying to figure it out, and he he figured out if, he, uh, if you ha- you cannot show someone hanging, uh. like that you cannot show someone hanging by their throat. However. So no in excess uh, references. Yes, yes, no in excess. Like that lovely young lad from in excess. However, um, you can show ultra violence. Like you can show like a dude getting ch- cut in half with a chainsaw. Oh, like, I thought you just meant um, uh, Clockwork Orange. <laughs> what with the dick? <laughs> no, no, no. That's just ultra violence. Oh, that's yes. Where, like bit... the term comes from. I th- oh, I yes. Believe. A bit of the old ultra violence. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I don't remember. But yeah, it's it's whatever. There's it doesn't make any sense, and that's why I hate YouTube. I only yes. watch like two channels on YouTube. You know, one is Red Letter Media, and the other is like, uh, shut up and sit down or whatever it is. The play the 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 gaming one. I like their reviews. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I hate YouTube, but I watch the fuck out of YouTube. I don't. I don't watch that much YouTube. Um, I do. I do subscribe to some uh restoration videos. <laughs> Oh, like the dudes who restore paintings and stuff? That stuff's cool. Yeah, and old objects. And I also, uh, but only like one or two of them. I'm very selective on those. Because some of them, man, some of those you could tell are just done. Like they're like Russian factories that like will take a toy, hit it with a hammer a couple times, soak it in water and let it sit out for a month. And they're like, oh, we're going to restore this. And then it's obviously like just filmed backwards. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, uh, it's so terrible. But there's like a couple German ones that I really like because you know if anyone's gonna fix anything, it's the Germans. That's uh, I mean, that's true. You just you 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 can't you, you gotta you gotta keep them uh you gotta keep them in check. But you gotta you're, keep you're you gotta right. keep them busy. 
Like, if, yeah, if, like you know, right. send them to like an art school or something. Keep them busy. <laughs> the uh... I also uh, I do subscribe to one channel that only has old episodes of Siskel and Ebert at the movies. So I, I tend to watch those old episodes. <laughs> that's that's great. <laughs> yes. Like I've like I really hate YouTube. I have like, as I say, a very select <laughs> amount of things that I watch Funny. on there. And there's actually one channel that I really like. What is it called? But they they basically talk about ancient battles and stuff like that. But they're super dramatic about it. <laughs> and the, but the the problem is is that they're super dramatic. But the man who narrates it has a British accent and sounds like this throughout the entire thing. He sounds like I I that that's sounds more, like a, he, who does he, it sound like that sounds I, I, like, that that sounded like a character. Yeah, I, I know it does. It's like he he almost sounds like Stephen Merchant. I want to say. Not that you would know who Stephen Merchant is. I don't know who Stephen Merchant is. Yeah, I, I think he sounds like the guy who does it sounds like Stephen Merchant. So I can't do too much about that. <laughs> All right. So uh, if you also getting on this, if you want to hear more, if you want to get more contact with me, you could follow me on Instagram at Game Classy Joe. I'm posting a little bit more, but I'm usually I'm on my summer hiatus right now. Uh, Steve is currently blocked off everything. So Discord is the best way to get him in contact with him it's true threatened to elon one too many times <laughs> too elon. Many. yeah <laughs> elon musk is voting republican shocked pikachu face what i can't believe it i can't believe it either and what? he says and he says that he used to be a democrat can't believe that either yeah exactly <laughs> uh people are such rubes man did you do you see that thing about like how everyone thinks that RFK Jr. is going to get all these votes? Who the fuck is RFK? Uh, uh, well, RFK, first of all, is Robert F. Kennedy, who was assassinated in 1968. Uh, or not, yeah, 1968. And, Man, uh, and the Kennedys just can't stop being assassinated. By Sirhan Sirhan, you know, as he was running for the Democratic uh, ticket. Uh, was it 68 or was it 64? No, it had to be 68. Um. And then, uh, but his son, I think it's his son. I don't know if it's his son or not. Is this like weird anti-vaxxer? Who's, like, <laughs> he, I think he got elected to something or other, but he's running for president. And then Fox News is like, you know, he's going to beat everybody. And it's like, no, no, he's not. <laughs> people are rubes. They're so dumb. They're rubes, dude. I don't know what the, th the people are fucking rubes. You know, and I, I just want to point this out there that I am not a Democrat. I, uh, I have been a Democrat for a long time, but I mean, I vote Democrat because I do want to take part in the political process. I don't want to throw away my vote in a two party system. And um, I am no way going to vote Republican. So. Yeah, I, I, I generally I, I vote in um, local elections only. You only vote local. I do. Okay. I mean, what the what the what the fuck am I gonna what 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 do I need to vote in a national election for? Every everything is going blue in my state, so I don't need to worry about that. That's very <laughs> true on that end. Uh, but and you do have to take care of your local elections because uh, Lambard does have a weird contingent of people who want to get on the school board. Yeah, they're fucking they're fucking ass. I like it when I, they text me and I I, I call them fascists. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Like yeah, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. I mean, you know, because we did we did lose our our one of our own. One Lombard's own this week. Lombard, Lomb, Lombard's own. Uh, uh, Ted Kaczynski. Uh, Ted Kaczynski, the, the the return hero. The return hero. The uni, the Unabomber was from uh, where Steve and I currently reside, and uh, you know the the proto right wing fascist that he was. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. just a, he's just a return guy. Yeah, you know he was a victim of MK Ultra. Look it up, sheeple. <laughs> Look it up, sheeple. All right, Mortal uh, Kombat Ultra, great game. Mortal Kombat Ultra, a <laughs> great game. MK Ultra, <laughs> not so great. Um, so Steve, uh, until next time, look up. I look up MK Ultra. There you go. <laughs> game classy.